Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be going over the 2017 Microeconomics exam, question number one. This covers perfect competition for the course exam description, unit three. Let's get on with the question. This is great. Now this question is all about the market for corn. Corn can be used as either food or as an input into the production of ethanol. We have to draw side-by-side -side graphs for the market and the firm. Here we're going to start off with the market. Label your y-axis as price or P, your x-axis as Q or quantity. Have a downward sloping demand curve, an upward sloping uh, supply curve. Where those two curves intersect, you have your market price labeled PM and your market quantity labeled QM. If you have all that down, you've got your point for the market. Now we're going to turn our attention to the firm graph. Remember the firm is earning zero economic profits. That means they're in long run equilibrium. In order to do that, we're going to take the equilibrium price from the market over to the graph. Remember, firms are price takers in a perfectly competitive market, so they have no influence on the price that these individual firms get to charge for their product. That market price becomes the firm's marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price. Mr. DARP, as many teachers call it. Have your marginal cost curve drawn in, looks like a Nike swoosh. Where those two curves intersect, drop down, that is your MR equals MC profit maximizing quantity. Label that in next. And because this firm is earning zero economic profits, we need the average total cost to be equal to the price at that profit maximizing quantity. So draw in your average total cost curve hitting that intersection where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And remember the ATC needs to be at its minimum point where it intersects there. I suggest you draw in a relatively steep average total cost curve. It helps with shading later so that it's almost more V-shaped than U-shaped. And if you have that there, you're gonna get your points. For part B, we have an increase in the demand for ethanol. Ethanol, remember, has corn as a primary input. Since there's an increase in the demand for ethanol, there's going to be a derived increase in the demand for corn. So we're going to show an increase in the demand for corn here. On that market graph, show the rightward shift of that demand curve and indicate with P star and Q star the increase in the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. For the market, that'll get you the point. Now we're going to turn our attention to that firm graph. The price in the market just went up. That's going to shift the marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price upward as well, giving us a new, higher marginal revenue equals marginal cost profit maximizing quantity. At that profit maximizing quantity, the new one, in order to find the profit, you go up until you hit that average total cost curve and continue up until you hit the new higher price. Those two points bring them to the axis and that gives you your shaded area of profit. A little note, that profit box does not go all the way down to the old demand curve and it does not go to the bottom of that average total cost curve. You can clearly see a gap there and you need to see that gap in order to make sure you get the points here. You do not have to mark that new higher profit maximizing quantity but I feel like you should just to make sure it's clear as to where your profit is. You get that all there, you've got your point. For part C, we have to explain what's going to happen in the long run now that this firm is earning economic profits. You don't have to graph it out, but I want to show you what's actually going to happen just so it's clear. In the market, we're going to have an increase in the supply of corn. The reason why is that firms are attracted to the new higher price of corn. So firms seeking profits are going to enter the market. Entering the market is going to cause an increase in the number of firms selling corn that shifts the supply curve to the right, dropping that price in the market down, back down to PM that we had before. Over on the firm side of things, that new lower market price as a result of that decrease in price from the market is going to shift that marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price 
back down to where it was before, to the old Mr. Darp, which is going to put the quantity for this firm back to where it was before. So in the long run, we're going to see a decrease in price for the market and an increase in the quantity for the market. So now that we know what's going on in the market here, you just need to say it. There's going to be a decrease in the price, an increase in the quantity for the market, and explain saying because firms enter the market and that increases the supply in the market. And then you've got your points. This question keeps on going here with part D. Now, thanks to the increase in the price we just saw, what's going to happen to the market for soybeans? Soybeans can be made by farmers who also produce corn. As a result, farmers seeking those high profits will get a signal. High prices signal high profits. And as a result, farmers are going to enter the market to produce that corn as they exit the market to produce soybeans. Here's what that looks like on that soybean market graph. We're going to have a decrease in the supply of soybeans as farmers exit that market and enter the corn market. That's going to cause the price of soybeans to go up and the quantity of soybeans to go down. So now that we've seen what that looks like on the graph, it's time to answer the question. You don't have to draw any of that, by the way. Just answer and explain. The price in the market for soybeans will increase because the supply of soybeans will shift to the left as a result of farmers exiting the soybean market and entering the corn market. And if you have all that, you got the point. We still have the corn market here, but now the government is going to impose an effective price ceiling on this market. We need to sketch out the graph, label that price ceiling, and label the quantity of corn that consumers will purchase. Have a downward sloping demand curve, upward sloping supply curve, with price and quantity on that y-axis and that x-axis. The price ceiling goes below equilibrium because price ceilings go below equilibrium when they are effective. If it was above equilibrium, it would be ineffective and the market would just search out the equilibrium. At that price ceiling, we have a higher quantity demanded and a lower quantity supplied. Which one of those will be the quantity that is actually sold? It's the lower quantity because consumers can't buy more than is going to be produced at that artificially low price. So it is the lower quantity supplied that will be labeled here as QP. Label QP at that low price and you've got your points here. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where you can find lots of games and activities to help you practice the skills necessary in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the Total Review Booklet with everything you need to know to do well on the microeconomics and macroeconomics exams. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.